Hi there. Now, in this question, we're given this figure which shows a curve C with polar equation R equals A sine 2 theta. Theta being greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to pi upon 2 radians. And a half line L. The half line L meets C at the pole O and the point P. And the tangent to C appears parallel to the initial line. The polar coordinates of P are R and phi. And then in part A, we've got to show that the cos of phi is equal to 1 over root 3 for 6 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you might want to fast forward just to check the final solution. Or I'll take you slowly through the method. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, when we've got at P a tangent, okay, which is parallel to this initial line here, then if I just draw that tangent in, what is happening is that this value through here, let's just draw a line down there, this distance here is at a maximum. If I call this distance Y and form a triangle in here, like that, this right angle triangle. From O to P, this is going to be R. And this angle in here is theta. And that would mean that by trigonometry, this side here, Y, would be equal to R sine theta. So we want this to be a maximum. We want, in other words, dy by d theta to be a max. And that's where we're going with this question. I'm going to write down that we've got that y equals r sine theta and substitute for r as a sine 2 theta, put it into here, differentiate dy d theta and put it equal to 0 for the maximum value of y. And hopefully we should be able to find out that that gives us our result here. OK, so that's the method I'm using. So if we now substitute for R, replace it then with A sine 2 theta, we've got that multiplied with sine theta. And if I differentiate this with respect to theta, therefore we have dy by d theta equals A is a constant. I'll just put it out the front then of a square bracket because We've got a product of two functions of theta here. So in order to differentiate this, I'm going to use the product rule. So if we take the first part here, sine 2 theta, and multiply it by the differential of sine theta, which is cos theta, and to this we add, and I'll take sine theta, and multiply it with the differential of sine 2 theta, which is 2 cos 2 theta. OK, so just finish that square bracket off there. Now we know that at P, the value of Y must be a maximum. So at P, we know that dy by d theta then must equal 0. And we also know that at P, the coordinates of P are r thigh. So that means that theta must be equal to phi. So we just need to substitute our values in then to our equation. We've therefore got that this factor in here must be equal to zero. So we've got sine then of two phi cos phi plus and then if I tidy this up, just put the 2 at the front, we've got plus 2 sine phi, and then cos 2 phi, and that's going to equal 0. So solving this equation, I need to get towards cosine of phi. So sine 2 phi, well we haven't got much choice in that matter, that's 2 sine phi cos phi. And if I multiply it with this cos phi, we're going to get cos squared phi. Okay, that comes from the, using the double angle 
formula there. With this one, we've got the 2 sine phi. But for cos 2 phi, using the double angle formula there, I'm going to pick on the version 2 cos squared phi minus 1. Purely because I want to head towards using cos phi here. Now I notice that 2 sine phi is a common factor now between those two terms on the left. So we'll pull that out as a common factor, 2 sine phi. And then in brackets here we're going to have cos squared phi. And then we're going to have plus 2 cos squared phi minus 1. And that equals 0. So that means that therefore either sine phi would equal 0 or we've got this factor here which is 3 cos squared phi minus 1 that equals 0. So 3 cos squared phi minus 1 equals 0. Now if sine phi was to equal 0 that means that phi would equal 0. And that can't be the case because P clearly is not on the initial line. So therefore I'm going to say that that's not applicable. Okay. Now for this one, 3 cos squared phi minus 1 equals 0. Then rearranging this we can see that cos squared phi would equal 1 third. And then if I square root both sides, cos of phi must equal the square root of third, which is going to be the square root of 1, which is 1, over the square root of 3, which is root 3. Now, when we take a square root, it could be plus or minus, but it's not going to be the negative option, purely because theta here lies between naught and pi upon 2 radians. So that means that if you took the cosine of any angle in this region here, then it's going to always be positive. Okay, I'll put a note on that, okay, as phi, okay, lies between naught and pi upon 2 radians. I hope you can see that, okay. That's just to cover the fact that it can't be negative. All right.